Tips from Trestle is brought to you by The Belter Companies, Navigator Group Purchasing, and E-Menu Choice Point of Sale. Welcome to Tips from Trestle. This podcast is dedicated to discussing the senior living industry with a unique focus on food, hospitality, and leadership. I'm your host, Aaron Fish. As a 25-year veteran of the hospitality industry, I've focused my work on creating exceptional experiences for the customers we serve. My goal for this podcast? Educate, inform, and inspire leaders in senior living to bring food and hospitality to the front of mind in our industry. Let's bring the innovative and passionate spirit of hospitality to everything that we do. For the residents, families, guests, and employees we serve each and every day. So what are we waiting for? Let's get to it. Today on Tips from Trestle, I'm joined by Matt Steenerson. He is the co-founder and CEO of eMenu Choice Point of Sale. He has over 15 years of experience managing the development and implementation of complex software applications. In 2012, Matt began working with Ling Bloomston, a nonprofit senior living provider in St. Paul, Minnesota, on an application to provide residents in their care center with more choice, while also modernizing their kitchen, then paper-based process. In 2015, eMenu Choice won the Leading Age Minnesota Leading Change Innovation Award, and Ling Bloomston began offering eMenu Choice to other communities. Today, eMenu Choice has evolved to support the complex needs of all senior communities from dietary management and skilled nursing to point of sale in assisted, independent living, and CCRC's LPCs. eMenu Choice is improving dining at hundreds of communities throughout the United States and Canada. Matt, thanks for joining me today on Tips from Trestle. Yeah, thanks for having me, Aaron. Glad to do this. Yeah, so in, in all transparency, we've worked together before in the past, so I want everybody to know that. Um, yes, sir. But I always find that your origin story about how eMenu Choice came about so unique compared to other point of sale operators. And so I'd love for you to tell the listeners a little bit about how all of it came about. Yeah, it was it was definitely a happy accident. Uh, you sort of hit the the highlights in the in the bio, but um, in 2012, I was working at a, a software company in the Twin Cities. Uh, we did warehouse management software, and uh, I'd done a bunch of things, starting with implementations and all the way into. I was at the time a director, and I think I had 30 or 40 reports kind of coming up through me. Um, so like deep into the kind of upper middle management kind of, yeah. <laughs> uh, you know, slog. Um, but really at my heart, I was like a technical person and I wanted to like solve problems. And so this is before I had kids, I was doing like iPhone and iPad apps on the side, like just for fun. Cause that's what people like me do for fun, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> and, um, a colleague of mine, uh, went to high school with this guy who ran a nursing home in St. Paul. And he said, you know, they're trying to, to solve this problem that they're having where their residents are kind of not feeling like they have the choice in their dining, even though they're, you know, kind of really on the bleeding edge, at least as far as skilled nursing goes in terms of what they're offering. And so I met with this group, Ling Bloomston um, in, in St. Paul, and we kind of started with the idea of, of making an iPad app to, to basically show pictures of food so the residents knew what a, a Polish sausage was or what, you know, beef tips were. And really the idea was, was, that the residents, like they had all this choice, but they didn't, they weren't understanding the options, whether it was language barriers or whether they just, you know, didn't know what these items were. And the kitchen was putting in all this work to serve these unique items and have an always available menu, but the residents, like, it just wasn't, there wasn't a communication there to show what those things were. So they had tried to make like a three ring binder of uh, 600 pages of food oh, items, wow. you know? Yeah. Pictures of every item, descriptions of every item, you know, because language was a, a barrier too. So the, the staff would, a lot of the staff is not native English speaking. So when the special of the day was a Polish sausage and, and they said Polish sausage, you know, it's like, you're not going to order something that you don't understand. So that was like yeah. the genesis of the idea. So we, we took 
that and we put pictures of all the food and it was really resident focused, you know? Um, and then really quickly afterwards, uh, it was like, well, I, I was in the, I was in the nursing home one day and I saw how they were like taking the orders with paper and, and tallying up, you know, they had 240 beds in this nursing home, 14 different areas where they served the meals, like neighborhood kind of kitchens. And it was mm -hmm. all produced in one kitchen. And I was like, well, we have the pictures. Why don't we sort of take the orders, you know, in the app as well. So that was sort of like a, a proof of concept. And um, yeah, I mean, I've worked on, on the, the product kind of nights and weekends um, from, from early 2013 until 2015 when we won the Leading Age Minnesota Award. And that's kind of, we decided to, to fund it as like its own company and start trying to bring it to other people. But really that, that was kind of the, <laughs> the thing. I, I remember having a conversation with, with Jeff at the time, who's now the CEO of, of Link Bloomson and just kind of saying like, you know, what do you, what do you want to do with this? Um, and I'm like, well, I don't know. This is like a nice idea, but I can't imagine spending like the next five years of my life on it, you know? Right. And that was, that was 2012 and that was 2023. So <laughs> 11 years ago, right? <laughs> that goes. Yeah. It's yeah. The, it's funny that you mentioned the 600 page binder because that is such a like such a crazy sounding solution that I have not you know personally experienced, but I've heard and heard people telling stories that are very similar. Like, well, we're just trying to figure out how to solve this problem, and they always go to kind of the most archaic idea, right? Especially Before, back then. Right? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. It's like. Yeah, I'll just take a picture of it and we'll put it in a binder and we'll just show the residents. Or, yeah, let's just get this new technology. I guess it's kind of new at the time that, you know, iPads and iPhones and, hey, look, we could put pictures on this and I could see how it would evolve and just take its natural course. Now, one question, I don't know that I've ever asked you this. Um, we're in kind of the, the timeline of senior living focused Point of sales would you guys say you were i would think you were fairly early on in the process as far as operators that were or companies that were focused just on senior living yeah i think um it's it's been sort of interesting to see the industry evolve as as we've kind of evolved you know we, we started in like skilled nursing because that's where the problem was that we were initially trying to solve and we pretty quickly saw that that there was kind of a greater need and a greater sort of willingness to adopt the technology in like the AL and IL space. But when we started, I think that CCRCs were like kind of the only place in town that had like a, a point of sale. And at that time, I wouldn't even have considered us like a point of sale. You know, that's yeah. one of the things that we've sort of struggled with um, through the years is like, how do you define an application like ours that is in sort of skilled nursing and it's like a dietary and order management system but in the AL, IL, CCRC world is like a, you know, now anyways, it's like a, a true full featured point of sale. And it's like, how do you kind of say one thing without alienating the other thing? It's just like, I think we have a really diverse industry with super yeah. diverse needs. And as we've seen like super diverse processes, you know, Ling Blooms and places orders ahead of time and they, they uh, like oh, the morning of and they prepare them uh, in a big kitchen and distribute them to the kitchen. So everybody gets what they want. Um, but you know, more and more we saw people were going to restaurant style and, and now, especially in the AL, IL, CCRC, like it's not only restaurant style, it's like the nicest restaurants, you know, <laughs> yeah, that you can go no. to. So I think we've seen the industry evolve and we've seen where it, it used to be kind of uh, a thing that people wouldn't even think to have, um, in AL, uh, it's, it's sort of moved from, you need to have it in CCRC. And now we're getting into the point where we're getting phone calls from AL communities and they've already done the research and they know that they need something. It's really interesting because that's sort of the idea that Jeff had all these years ago was that, you know, someday everybody's going to need this. Um, yeah. And it's, you, we kind of see it coming true in front of our eyes. Yeah, no, definitely. It, it makes me go back to my first experience with a quote unquote senior living point of sale. You know, I was at a CCRC. Um, when I, when I first got into the industry and this was probably 06, 07. Um, and we were tasked with implementing this point of sale that was designed by our accounting software because it, you know, they want the CFO wanted all the data to feed over. And in theory, it sounded amazing, but the more we got in and we, I mean, we spent six figures with hardware and software licensing and, and training and all of that stuff to basically have 
what turned out to be a glorified spreadsheet. It was not in any way, shape or form as advanced enough to do what we needed to do because we were trying to do restaurant service and it wasn't really built for that. It was super frustrating. Um, and so it kind of lets me kind of fast forward to more recent times, um, you know, and it's 2023, you know, COVID is, you know, going away, gone, if you will. I mean, we're, the emergency uh, is going away in May. Uh, and so we don't really want to kind of talk about it, but it's had a huge impact on how technology has it got more uh, valuable and more uh there's more awareness about why it's needed. And so what are some of the, the long-term changes and trends you've seen because of that with what you're doing? Today, I want to tell you about one of Trestle's senior living partners, Belter. Belter is a food service design, equipment, and supply company that has been providing expert guidance to the food and beverage industry for nearly a century. A strategic partner to the most successful food service operations in the country Belter provides support in kitchen and bar design, equipment procurement and install, and supplies. Their team of senior living food service experts have experience across the continuum of care. From independent living to skilled nursing and CCRCs, Belter specializes in right-sizing new facilities, modernizing remodels, and providing the right food service equipment and supplies. At Belter, they are committed to creating memorable experiences for their customers and their guests. With their top-notch team and a global network of quality supplier partners, their customer-focused approach is built on a foundation of collaboration and decades of industry experience. So thank you for considering Belter for all of your food service needs. Yeah, well, it's, it's uh as much as we want to get rid of COVID, I think like the long-term effects of it are here to stay, right? Yeah. I think there's like no doubt about that. And I think we've seen in the industry, a lot of the same things that we've seen um, elsewhere, like particularly around, you know, deliveries and um, like maybe, maybe places were doing, you know, 10 or 15 deliveries a day. Um, obviously during COVID, like when everything sort of started, it went to all deliveries all the time. And we really saw our customers struggle with how do we take a process that was designed to be restaurant service and staffing mm -hmm. that was designed to be restaurant service. And how do we sort of transform that to be, you know, now we need to deliver, you know, 200 trays a meal three times a day. And we just like don't yeah. have the people or the processes or the timing to do that. I mean, I, you lived through that as an operator as well, right? Yeah. So no, it was, it was definitely a nightmare. <laughs> Yeah, it yeah. was so, no you know, one. One thing that we that we saw sort of immediately out of that was sort of the need for like a resident portal where they could go in and actually like manage their orders or or order food for themselves. Um, I think this like started as like we had a feature that was that did that, but it sort of hadn't gotten a lot of love. It was sort of like a a few places would use it. People thought it was kind of a cute feature, but then yeah. very shortly after. COVID hit, it was like, well, like people were seeing their residents use DoorDash and Uber Eats. And so they're like, well, why don't, why don't we have this for, for our people? Like, why are they doing this kind of archaic, like call the front desk or call the kitchen or you know, like, you know, there's gotta be like a better process in this. So we really invested yeah. into making that resident portal, you know, nicer and more of a first class feature. And, and communities really responded and like people started using it. And what used to be kind of like a cute, nice to have feature now is like a feature that, you know, is almost becoming a must have because people are just getting used to the idea of doing this. Yeah. It, I mean, just taking something, I, I love the reference to like Uber Eats and DoorDash, right? Because I'm a firm believer that in the next five years, if, if we're not as operators running restaurants, take, take the hyphen style out of it. If it's not a restaurant, you yeah, don't exactly. treat it that way. If you don't come from that mindset of how do I make this thing make money for us? How does this like quality that level? Uh, we're not going to be successful. And so kind of taking what we saw out on in the public and bringing it inside, I think makes so much sense. Um, and it really gives better access for not just the residents, but their, their families to be able to see what's going on. Are they actually 
ordering? Are they actually eating? Because that's always a question, right? Is is mom getting enough food, you know, and things like that. So yeah. um, it's, it's cool to see how that evolves. It, it makes me want to ask you a little bit about your process behind that. Is it um, when you're looking to develop the, the software a little bit more, how, uh, how do you get to the point where you decide, oh, well, we're going to invest in this versus not invest in this as far as time, energy, resources in development? Yeah, it's a it's a really tricky question. Um, we you know we have a pretty small team, uh, and but but we built the product in a way where we could kind of rapidly uh, rapidly improve it and rapidly put features out. So there's a lot of like who are, who are we talking to in the sales process and what are the prospects that we have? You know what are they asking for that we're not strong at or that we could improve in? But it's also listening to our customers and especially during the times of COVID. I mean. Like the resident portal is a good example. Another good example of like just like brute force prioritizing an issue that we kind of had on the back burner for a long time is uh, reservations. You know, reservations were like, you know, people would ask us about it in, in demos and we'd say, well, we don't really have anything. And they'd be like, yeah, well, yeah, we probably don't really need that anyways. But then, you know, June 2020 came around. Um, I like to call it the first end of the pandemic. Yeah, right. <laughs> Which is like, you know, <laughs> cute to think about now. But like at the time it was like, oh, thank goodness. Like the pandemic's wrapping up. We're opening dining rooms again. This is great. Yeah. Um, but but yeah, so people were opening dining rooms again. But if you remember, it was like, you know, 15 people at a time or whatever it might be. And so yeah. we were getting lots of questions from our customers about, well, how like how can we manage this? So we basically like put our entire roadmap on hold and said, well, let's, let's do this reservation feature that we've been thinking about and let's do it in a way that, you know, hopefully we'll be out of the pandemic at some point. Um, and we can use, you know, we, so we want it to be like a first class reservation feature for the future. Right. But how can we specifically add features to it that help people like reopen their dining room slowly? And so, you know, in a, in a pretty short amount of time, we were able to develop that, release it, you know, and the way that our software is deployed, everybody has it kind of when it, as soon as it's released, everybody can use it. And we really did a lot of education to get the word out and, and, you know, here's how it works. Here's how you can use it to, to limit your dining room or to trickle people in or to have multiple seatings or, or things like that. It's just, so we try not to be like only reactive on the software side. Right. I think it's like really important that we can be reactive uh, when we need to be. And we just like, we don't develop a lot of things on spec. I think, like I said earlier, the industry is like so diverse. We're hearing so many different things. And it's sort of my job as the product leader to say, here are kind of the themes that we're hearing. Um, and here's kind of how we can attack it from a product standpoint. Yeah. I mean, that that whole process is, is fascinating. And having been on the operator side and having had some of those conversations with you, um, I, I, I there's a value to that that I think people don't understand or, or see that being able to be nimble in, in the process is, is so important. So um, one of the things that I, I, yeah, you know, coming from the operation side of things that I'm always, I, I always want to stress is my vantage point is, is that, you know, point of sale is a want and not a need when it comes to technology. You know, we're talking about all sorts of things, but um, when it comes to technology and resident engagement and care and fitness and, you know, resident monitoring and, and all these things, but there's so much data that comes from the food service operation that can help you be better at it, be a better business and help you understand like your residents better. And so um, from your vantage point as a, a point of sale uh, operator, um, how, what are you seeing around that? Are you seeing more and more uh, people out in the industry realizing this or is it still kind of a we're, we're pulling people along uh, in that process? A Navigator is the largest full service GPO that exclusively focuses on the senior living community and what that means is we provide products and services that help our members provide a great environment for their residents such as like MRO, hospitality equipment, food, business products, as well as technology solutions. We actually surround our members with a level of support unmatched in the industry. 
Yeah, we're definitely seeing people. I think you said want instead of a need, but what you meant to say is it's a need instead of a want. Oh, yes. Yeah, you're right. I'm yeah, sorry yeah. I got it backwards. It is a definitely a need. Yeah, no, no that's, that's, <laughs> that's totally fine. So, but we're, we're definitely, we're definitely seeing um, people realizing, like I said earlier, like we saw it sort of, it was a need in CCRCs and now it's becoming a need in, in IL and AL and sort of as Jeff from Link Bloomson had sort of predicted 10 years ago, it's going to be in skilled like eventually and revenue capture might not be the thing that they're focused on, but it's resident choice and process improvement and staff efficiency and like all of these things. So it's, it's definitely working its way through the industry sort of from CCRCs, you know, backwards or forwards, kind of depending on how you look at it. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I, I think like, one of the main things that we're seeing now is with with staffing the way that it is and with food costs the way that they are, um, people are looking for a way to sort of not not cut costs um, and not necessarily like charge their residents more because yeah. like preferably you don't have to do either of those things. But what they're trying to do is gain efficiencies where when you get new staff, they have a program that's intuitive to use where especially, you know, younger staff, I mean, the training for a, a staff member, like a server for eMenu Choice, what we've heard from customers a lot of times is like, give them the iPad. Yeah. <laughs> That's the training, you know? For sure. Um, so, so you don't have to like, you don't have to get too deep into it. Now there's like a lot of administrative stuff that, you know, the, there's, there's a lot to learn. And, and certainly we want to have like those experts, but the, the staff training, the, the folks that are coming in and you might have some turnover on that it's, it's really important that that be really easy and also that it has all the options that that they need so we hear from a lot of places where you know they used to have a lot of order inaccuracies plates being sent back yeah um things like that because staff would come they'd write the thing on on, on paper they might uh they might have like a, a cheese or something in that oh well, we don't actually have you know gouda so you can't put that on our hamburger but with right. the point of sale, you have all the modifiers that you serve and they're all right there. And the, so the servers kind of know without any training. Um, so you're not getting food waste sent back to the kitchen, right? And, yeah. and, and those types of things. I think that's a good point, right? I think, uh, you know, in what I'm doing now with clients, I, I work with smaller operators. And I think a lot of times the value of that, that, that technology or that system to capture the data the right way um, you know, we were talking before we started recording about garbage in and garbage out um, from a data standpoint, and it's hard to filter that, especially if you're doing it all manually. And so if you're setting up your systems the right way, and you've got a, a tool that will capture it all the right way, I think there's a huge amount of um, value in that. And so, um, and so thinking about this point of sale as a need, um, as you talk to some of your customers, what, where do they see their return on investment come from from this, right? Because, um, you know, one of the things that I find unique about eMenu Choice, not necessarily in point of sales, but in senior living industry, is that you guys are cloud-based and you focus on the software piece and not so much everything else. Um, and yeah. so I think that's unique. but. Because of that, kind of talk a little bit about that ROI and, and how your customers get the value from what you offer. Yeah, we, well, we try to make the startup costs as low as possible, right? And so, like, certainly, like, bring your own hardware. Like, obviously, you might not have, you know, five or however many iPads, like, laying around. Um, but you can use those for other things or, you know, if we don't work out, hopefully we will. But if we don't work out, you're not locked into, like, a $25,000 piece of hardware, Right. It's just sitting there collecting dust, you know, um, the printers that we use, you know, it's like basically nothing's proprietary on the, on the upfront side. So that, like, that's, that's important sort of to stress on the ROI thing is that like, whatever you put in, it's like, it's yours and, and yeah. we're not, we don't sell hardware, so we're not making margin on, on that either. <laughs> right. Um, I, maybe we should, but, <laughs> but we don't, um, but yeah, I think the, the ROI that our customers are seeing, um, it, there's there's like some soft things that are harder to measure and like i already talked about like staff efficiency and and residents not sending things back and mm -hmm. and certainly like uh residents notice honestly that food service is faster when orders are more accurate 
Yeah. Like one of the unexpected things that we heard, you know, years ago when we started doing, uh, by the way, I love it that you call it uh, restaurant dining and that restaurant style. I think that's yeah. like an evolution that our industry could really use is, is we use the term restaurant style for like a really long time. Yeah. And we're starting to drop the style out of that. And I really like that you, that you emphasize it's, that. Yeah. And it's funny because we're talking about a point of sale and we're talking about order taking, right? The, the reason that, that I think that distinction is so important is when you say restaurant style, what you're talking about is, is you're faking it out front and your kitchen yeah. operation is still an institutional model, right? But having a tool such as a point of sale where you can actually create an order in the moment, you can create the items and in the back of the house create, I mean, you're cooking like a restaurant would. It's an order, it's cooked to order, it's plated and served, and you don't have all this stuff sitting is a huge value to quality, to your satisfaction. I mean, things that you were talking about that aren't quite as tangible, um, it's, it's there. And you can't accomplish that with a paper manual system. Yeah, and I want to get, I, I do want to get to the tangible stuff because that's like the easier stuff yes. to talk about and friends who like <laughs> the stuff that sells. But like before I do that, I just want to like emphasize too that like there's actually, I never wanted to be a point of sale. Like actually for years, I like actively avoided it because there's like 10,000 point of sales out there. And so right. it was like, you know, what are we going to do that's so special? Why don't we leave sort of like the money stuff to somebody? Like I really, for a long time, like I did not want to have <laughs> that stuff in the application because it was, it was more about the resident choice and about that kind of stuff. But like the fact of the matter is, is that people need the point of sale stuff. Yeah. Um, it's, it's a huge, uh, ROI, which, which I'll get to, but the other thing is, is be, because I was kind of resistant to that, what we ended up with was we have the healthcare features that the industry needs. So we have allergens, we have integrations with, you know, all the major EHRs, um, yeah. we have allergen flagging. So if, if you're allergic to eggs, I'm not going to let you order the egg salad sandwich, right? I'm not going to let you order the omelet. Um, and we're going to present alternates for you and, and things like that. So I think closing the conversation on sort of the, the softer ROI things, like yeah. it's a lot easier to take surveys, you know, when the surveyors come in, it's a lot easier to show them like, well, you know, here's Aaron, he's on a diabetic diet here. You can see all the things that he's ever had to order. And you can see that we're kind of abiding by that diet and we have notes on his profile that say, you know, may serve them half half servings of cake or whatever it might be um like all that stuff does lead to roi but it's softer uh, but let, yeah. let's talk about the more tangible things yeah definitely <laughs> well and, and it's it's the good transition because you know one of the things that, that i talk about i've been speaking to people about and work with my clients on is this idea of like retailization right like how you know we're we see margins are being squeezed. You know, we earlier we talked a little bit about not wanting to talk about COVID, but the realities are supply chains are squeezed, like margins are going up, it's are getting tighter. I mean, you know, costs of things are going up. So how do we find revenue to be able to better support our operations and keep investors and owners happy, right? And I think. Yeah, that's where a point of sale can come in and definitely help out as well. Yeah. And, and how do we do it? Like from what I said earlier too, like, how do we do it without sacrificing the quality of our food ingredients? Mm -hmm. How do we do it without making the residents feel like we're nickel and diming them for stuff? Yeah. You know, so a lot of what we, you know, we work with our customers on, because this is a lot too of like, um, you could have the best point of sale system in the world, but if you don't sort of adopt the processes to help support that this is back to like the garbage in garbage out process right yeah <laughs> is it's 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 really hard to see the benefit of something if you don't sort of enforce processes but so so what a lot of what, what we're advising our customers on and what we're seeing a lot of them do is to basically capture revenue that's walking out the door today so rather than increasing the prices of your food and like you might have to like you might have to increase the prices of your meals that's just like market reality right yeah but rather than that being the main way to capture additional revenue, you could actually, you know, capture automatically delivery charges. Our customers captured $2 million of delivery charges last year. Wow. $2 million right? of delivery charges. That's a lot. That's a lot. Right. And like, not everybody still like in our, in our application, like in our ecosystem, like not everybody is charging for deliveries and you yeah. like, you don't have to, but if you do charge for deliveries, which a lot of people do, 
how are you tracking that today? Is it automatic? Right. Yeah. And that's kind of the, the point of the point of sale. Another, another big one is guest orders. Yeah. So sons and daughters come in, right. Friends, whatever it might be. Um, it's like almost a million and a half dollars of guest orders from, from our ecosystem last year. And so like, how are you tracking that today? Can you put that on the residents account for them to pay later? Um, those are some big things. And then there's some more like not so obvious things. So mm -hmm. a, a big thing, especially now that we're seeing and some features that we added in the last couple of years to, to help people with this is if you're charging uh, for food by the meal, right? So lunch is, is $11 or whatever. Yeah. What, what defines a meal and what happens when a resident wants like an extra brownie or like a double portion or something like that? And I think if you set expectations right with your residents, it's perfectly reasonable to charge a few extra dollars for your second portion or yeah. the takeaway coffee and brownie. Like, you know, you're not an all you can eat buffet. Um, your residents know that. So if you just charge a couple extra dollars, that stuff really, like really seriously adds up. Absolutely. No, one of the things I always railed against as an operator and was constantly struggling was this concept of service creep in food service, right? It's always, yes. oh, yeah. well, we'll just give that away. Well, it's fine. It'll, it'll keep them happy. It'll keep them happy. And what they don't realize is at the end of the month, you just gave away an additional $5,000 in food costs, right? And yeah. Like, yeah. why aren't you on budget? We don't understand why you're not on budget. <laughs> well, because you were telling us to give it away. You know, you'd mentioned the, the, the guest meals and it made me think about this idea of, well, if, if, Sally comes in to visit her mom and she sits down and has a cup of soup. You don't really want to charge her that full $12 for a meal, right? So with your system, now you have the ability to say, oh, you know what? That's, we're going to charge you $2 for your cup of soup. And it feels reasonable and you're still capturing yeah. that and avoiding that service creep. And so it's such yeah, a I, I was gonna, powerful point. Yeah. I was going to bring up this, the same, the same example, or even, even, you know, a resident wants to come down and have a, a coffee and a, and a cookie and, but they're like, wow, I don't want to pay the $12 meal charge for a coffee and a cookie. Well, you have this section or this like group of items that you can get a la carte where your, you know, your whole menu isn't a la carte. So you don't have to deal with having to price everything and the kind of the complication that goes along with that. Yeah. But if somebody wants a coffee and a cookie, it can be a $3 charge to their room or to their declining balance. And, you know, it's equitable for them. They don't feel like they're being taken advantage of because like, you know, it's not free, right? Right. But it's also like they don't feel like they have to pay a full a full meal charge for it. And we also have on the op opposite side of things, we have a feature called premium items. Um, I'm not sure if you guys had, had used it or not, but basically if you want to have like prime rib on Friday nights, you can take your meal charge, which might be $14 and add $6 to it if somebody wants the prime rib. So it, it really gives you as a community the opportunity to kind of go above and beyond, not all the time, right? But to, right. to be able to provide these things without scraping away your own margins that you need to survive. Yeah, no, it, and there's so many ways. And the, the irony of all of it is, is that as we talk through these things that, you know, operators may be like, this is a really great idea. Restaurants have been doing this forever, yeah. right? Yeah. And so again, we're just taking the things that are working, that are profitable, that make sense and bringing them to this industry and being successful with them. And so um, as we kind of wrap up here, uh, I'm curious, what do you see kind of in the future, um, next four or five years? Is there anything like one big thing that you would, you're seeing or that you guys are working on that the industry can expect? Well, that's a really uh, interesting question. Yeah, I think the I think the biggest thing is going to be like continued integration and in analytics with things. So yeah. we're definitely working on some some data stuff, um, sort of long term, like you know, under the covers for the, for the time being. But like we have all this data, we can we can look at all these things. How can we like how can we act upon it? Mm -hmm. um, and then sort of integrating with other systems around the community. So like I said, we're integrated with EHR, we're integrated with billing systems. What does it look like when your point of sale is integrated with your resident and family engagement apps, right? So we're, yeah. we have an integration now with, with a few, uh, a few companies in that space, but I, I think like the holistic, like all the community and sort of, you know, software eating the world is like a thing that they said, like, you know, back in like the, <laughs> the early 2000s. Yeah. Um, but really it's like, 
it's true and you can see it in our industry now like it started with ehr definitely point of sale is a thing um all the engagement stuff that's that's going through the, out the industry i just think like all of these things need to be connected it maybe comes from like me working in warehouse management for nine years yeah um sort of being in like the execution space and not like the resource planning space where we were sort of the driver on the floor to like get everything done. So we needed to talk to the conveyors and we needed to talk to the shipping companies and we needed to talk to the order management system and the financials. And I sort of like accidentally found myself now in a similar position, being a point of sale and needed to talk to, you know, the, the EHR and the billing system and, and the resident engagement and like all, all those things. It's sort of like, uh, it, it worked itself out that I'm, I'm in almost the same place now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, a system is, can be great standalone, but I mean, a community, the, just the concept of community is you got to tie everything and bring everything together. So I think you, that's a great point to kind of wrap up on. So um, Matt, tell us how people can learn more about eMenu Choice. Yeah, well, uh, the best, best way is to uh, find us on our website, eMenuChoice.com. Um, another thing that, that we're excited about is we'll be at some industry events in the first half of the year. So, um, actually leading age Minnesota is, is next week. So it'll probably be, um, in the past by the time people hear this, <laughs> but we'll, we'll be, we'll be there, uh, for our Minnesota folks. Um, we're going to be at, uh, the senior dining association, uh, synergy show. Uh, I think it's in April. I should have had the date yeah. written down in front of me. Um, uh, we're also going to be at the senior housing news show, uh, dished, which is in Atlanta this year. Um, and then we'll be at, at some other places uh, first half of the year and then, and then later in the year as well. So yeah, if you see us at an event, please stop by and say, hey, um, I, I think it's just really fun to, uh, we've had so many conversations in the past, you and I, Aaron, just, I think yeah. it's fun to talk to operators. Uh, what are the challenges they're facing? You know, how do they overcome them today? What, you know, what things, you know, can we do? These are just like the, you asked about the product earlier. These are just like the things that that uh, I hear, and then it ends up becoming a, a product feature, you know, one day, just, just from osmosis. Absolutely. Well, hey, Matt, this has been uh, such a great chat. I always ta love talking to you about this stuff and, and how point of sale is so important to everything we do in the food service side of things. Uh, and especially as we evolve hospitality, we'll have to have another conversation about everything outside of food service uh, and point of sale yes. at some point in the future. So, um Thanks again for all your time and uh, for joining me today here on Tips from Trestle. Yeah, thanks for having me, Aaron. So there you have it, another one in the books. Thanks again, everybody, for listening. Please follow, like, and subscribe on YouTube, Spotify, Apple, or wherever you get your podcasts. And follow us on Twitter at Tips from Trestle. You can also learn more about the work I do by following me on LinkedIn, Twitter, Instagram, and even TikTok. And be sure to check out Trestle Hospitality Concepts at www.trestlehospitalityconcepts.com. I'm your host, Aaron Fish, and this has been another episode of Tips from Trestle. <laughs>